So now let's focus on the steady state transmission rate, which is really the most useful in designing a safety guideline. It's also the most conservative because the trans transient transmission rate is always smaller than the steady state. So our formula for the steady state transmission rate is shown here in terms of the relaxation rate lambda c of r of the aerosol concentration in the air, and also nq of r, which is the density of infection quanta in the air per radius. So let's uh, sketch some of the important functions here um, as a function of radius, and try to get a sense of how we can maybe simplify this expression. So first of all, we've already defined CQ, which is the integral of NQ of R dr. This is the critical disease parameter, which is the infection quanta per exhaled air volume. I don't mean to cross that out, but rather just to do this, okay. Uh, so CQ is a very important quantity for us, and we will return to that. That's the quantity that we're going to want to fit to, uh, to disease data for COVID-19 specifically. And this would be the exhaled infection quanta per air volume, and we'll typically want to measure that at sort of peak infectivity of an individual in order to design a conservative criterion. So what is CQ? Well, if I plot this NQ, it has a bunch of factors in it. So it has the roughly constant assumed viral load per liquid volume. It has the infectivity, which we've already argued should be smaller in larger droplets because it's more difficult for the virion to diffuse out of those droplets once you get above, say, 5, 10 microns, if not less. There's the droplet distribution itself, which depends on the type of respiration, but often has a peak which is submicron and then sort of a fairly broad tail at the higher end uh, with smaller amounts of larger droplets. And then VD is four pi r cubed, uh, time, uh, which is just the volume of a drop. So this net quantity V of N of Q has some kind of peak around one micron or less, and then a tail. And then in the integral here, uh, we have the integral of CQ or very, of NQ is CQ, so that's very important. But there's these other factors, PM and lambda C, or one over lambda C. Each of those quantities gives us a cutoff, which makes the larger droplets less important for this problem of airborne transmission in a well-mixed room. So lambda C, as you can see, is a bunch of constant factors, except for the sedimentation rate. So this lambda A times R over RC squared, that is the sort of radius dependent change of the sedimentation rate relative to the ventilation rate, a, a lambda A. So as you can see, this goes like one plus, a constant plus R squared. So as you go to large R, the inverse of that is one over a constant plus R squared. So it goes to zero, okay? Uh, so it provides a cutoff and the scale for that cutoff is what we called RC. That's the sort of critical size of a droplet, which is sort of just sedimenting at a rate comparable to the ventilation rate. Because really this is ventilation and sedimentation, which are compared when you define RC. In addition to that, we have PM squared, which is the max uh, penetration or transmission factor. So uh, while masks are sort of 100% or very good, high, very efficient at filtering large droplets, which sort of don't fit through the fabric or the mesh, uh, they're not as good as filtering smaller droplets. So if you look at the transmission probability, when you're down uh, well below micron, most masks are not doing a great job filtering. They may get 5%, 10% if you're lucky, um, and depending on the quality of the mask. Uh, but then it comes down uh, because you start to have better and better blockage of particles by the mass. So basically, all these factors uh, basically serve to kind of cut off this distribution so that we're not worried about the large drops when we're interested in aerosols. But it does so here in a way which is quantitative. So we're not just arbitrarily saying, as is sometimes uh, said in, in the field, that sort of say 10 microns or 5 microns is the limit of the aerosols but rather we actually have a well-defined characteristic size that can emerge here. And the way we can define that is by taking the full um, expression for the steady state transmission that has all the radius dependent uh, terms uh, in it and write this as QB squared V uh, times, uh, and then we'll keep the CQ from the integral of NR, CQ uh, times, 
And then we'll imagine that the remaining radius dependent factors, p, m, and lambda c, are sampled at a certain value r bar. So what is r bar? Well, if you know the functions p, m, and lambda c is a function of r, there is a value of r, which we call r bar, which is when you actually do this full integral, you would get that value. So that has to be determined. It can be done numerically. But you can kind of see graphically where it ends up. So what we're asking here is like, what is sort of the typical value of the mass penetration factor in the relaxation time? Well, it's going to be sort of where the most weight is here. Um, keeping in mind also that there is, uh, there's more volume at the higher side than at the lower side. So if we look at sort of how much infectivity there is, we might want to emphasize that. So depending on you know, the details here, somewhere over here is going to be R bar. So what we're saying here is that even though our theory has all of the radius dependence in it, so if you knew exactly the type of masks you have and you know PM of R from experimental measurements, maybe you know a lot about the, the virion and, and how, it, how uh, infectious it is in different size droplets, or you've studied sedimentation, you have all these functions. Um, you can, it, there's a well-defined R bar at which you can just use you know, kind of this simple expression uh, in place of actually doing those integrals. So that's actually a useful simplification. Um, and in addition to that, uh, we can also write this another way, which can be useful, is to take the mass factor out and write it as a quanta emission rate lambda q, where lambda q is qb times cq. So this is the quanta emission rate by an infector. So if you don't like this notion of infection quanta per volume, when you multiply by the breathing flow rate, you're actually getting how many quanta per time are being emitted by the infector. And then what's left over is another factor, which I'll call FD, which is something we'll come back to later, which is what I call the dilution factor. So if we take the breath of an infected individual, and then it ends up being diluted into the room, the ratio of the concentration of infection quanta or virions in the breath compared to that which emerges in the well mixed room, that's the dilution factor. So, um, this will become important later when we look more closely at respiratory fluid mechanics and we look at the plumes or clouds of droplets that are being emitted by a person when they're breathing, it, very close to the person's mouth, it's a really high, much higher concentration, and eventually it gets sort of swirled around and mixed in the room, and it reaches the steady state values that we calculate. This FD gives you that ratio in some sense, and gives you a sense of how bad the risk is from short range transmission versus the well mixed room. So we'll come back to that. But this is a nice simplification for how we can think about the steady transmission rate in terms of several key variables, which I have boxed here. And so we will now move on to applying this uh, to COVID-19.